You're listening to Parasearch Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. Parasearch UK Radio. Parasearch Radio, broadcasting to the UK and beyond. The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch Radio or its affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to The Supernatural Chat Show with your host, Sean Cadman, only on Parasearch Radio. Good evening everybody and welcome once again to the amazing Supernatural Chat Show with me, your host, Sean Cadman. Tonight, well, tonight's guest is, the experience this guy's got is phenomenal. He's one of the most friendly people you could meet, one of the most likeable people you could meet. And to top it all off, he is the host of Paraforce Holland. I'd like to welcome onto the show tonight, Mr. Gert Brower. Are you there, Gert? Yes, I'm in. I'm in Good John. evening. Good How evening. are you, mate? I'm very well, and you? I'm not bad at all. Thank you very much. Good. So, for the listeners who don't know much about yourself, who they've seen you on social media and everything. We'd just like to tell everybody a little bit about yourself, what you do, etc. Just a few minutes and I'll let you have a waffle. <laughs> okay. Um, my name is Gerd. I know most of you guys know me from Air Force UK. I know Vivian Paul for a couple of years now. She introduced me in England. Uh, I work as a paranormal researcher and medium uh, beside that, I'm a demonologist, uh, and I, yes, I travel around the world. I did America, I did, I'm doing French now, I did the UK, Ireland, Germany, Belgium, a lot of countries. So, uh, I teach my less, I did some lessons, uh, for a church style of demon, demonology by James Long that's coming on Paraforce UK. So, that's Formula One. Plenty of experience. I try to. I try to. <laughs> what What was the course like with James Long then? How did that all go? Um, <clears throat> I saw years ago, I saw uh, the courses by James Long. And so I just sent him an email. I wanted to do his courses. And uh, for me, it was more to get more information about the way how the church did all did, you know. So um, yeah, so I did his free courses, and uh, yeah, I was happy to do. Did you think that benefited you as a paranormal investigator? Do you think it gave you another sort of pers- perspective on everything? Um, it's a, it was just more some more information, you know, and um, I, I liked it to understand more about the church was thinking and now I'm working with the, the Dutch Catholic and Christian church, you know? Yeah. And yeah, you learn a lot of it. You you more understand what they mean with the word demon and with the word angel, you know? People are all thinking about like uh, with two horns on their head, but um in the story about the church, it's more, more. It were just people, you know. Uh-huh. 
uh, of people that didn't like the church that were the demons in those eyes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've, I've had a lot of personal issues recently with people on a couple of social media sites to do all to do with demonology and demons actually um, people put it up that i know for fact demons don't exist etc etc and we've got into some big arguments over demonology and demons people claiming that demonologists are a waste of time they don't know anything it's just on paper and demons don't exist it's all a creation of the church what's your views on that uh, my view is like um, like the way the church are doing it. Uh, I, I've spoken to the church; they needed to to rethink about stuff. So in Holland, they are doing that, and the kind of way that the church is doing is just uh, a made up strategy to pick up people in their religion, like uh, we have. We have different religions where they want to have a lot of people in, like yeah. the Vatican and all. Yeah, it's in every religion. If I look how I'm doing the demonology, I'm more looking at religion, structures, um, history. Um, I want to research everything to make myself understand. And the most uh, I use in my... Uh, Think, way of thinking is more psychology. You know, I love psychology more than the way how the church is thinking. Yes, yeah. yeah. Do you think psychology, learn, knowing something about psychology, is a a big part of being a paranormal investigator? Yes, yes. Uh, if, I, if I'm looking at psychology, uh, a lot of people just going on research and don't understand what they are doing, you know, uh, yeah. it's, it's crazy to say, I'm, I'm teaching my members in my team how I can control uh, the research in my hands, you know, how, uh -huh. how they will respond, how they will react. And if people seeing that, they said, Gert, you already know what the reaction is. I say, yeah, I understand how a normal person will think. Uh, an entity will react similar as a normal person, you know? Yeah. It's, it's like I said, I mean, do you think psychology is, it can sort of, I can say, it can direct an investigation where the psychology is used properly. It can direct the way people are thinking of an investigation and what they're seeing and hearing. Yeah, yeah. I think it... Um, a lot of sorry, I, um, a lot of people don't understand the way of what psychology is. You know, uh, how can I explain that better? It's like um, people are learning how to research, but don't use the psychology, the way how psychology is is. You know, and they don't understand a lot about it. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. If I see, um, they watch television and they they work that's, that style of television. How they see EVPs, they don't how to uh, get better response or how to do better research. You know, I think you you will will do the similar thing if you do events. You will. I will always observe people. You know, I love to observe people. Yes, yeah. It's like. Um... Like you say, EVPs and things like that, I think if people learned a bit more of the psychology side of things, they'd probably get better results through EVPs by knowing the questions to ask, whereas people seem to tend to just ask the usual questions of what's your name, who are you, what, is it male or female? And bringing the psychology side into it, I think, expands an investigation. Do you agree with that? Yes, I agree with it. If you... Um look like um, there's a public and you ask the people to to choose a number between 0 and 10. They, it's like people always will begin with 3 and then 7. It's all regular stuff, you know? Yeah. yeah. If you should think about regular stuff and 
way how you can use it in paranormal research, you will get better response response and better understanding in the in the field, you know? Yeah, and definitely. So, um, Viv's got a question for you, Gert. She says, is Gert still investigating at the Hell House? Can he talk about what happened there? Yes, I'm still researching at the Hell House. That's now for two years. That's the, it's a building from, uh, a big building from three parts, you know? Um, if I, when I came there, it was like, uh, slamming doors, uh, mental you get mental issues uh, smells uh, scratches on your body and i was studying it i tried to understand it and what i just what we just said sean uh, i use psychology on it to understand why they were attacking us so i made i made it understandable there i i spoke in it in an uh, recorder and I was telling them, uh, in a way, through boxes, what I wanted from them. And I did it several of times. It was like I, I was doing uh, sessions by the shrink, you know? Yeah. And, and I was there for to be in peace, you know? In, in the beginning, I couldn't only be there for 10 minutes. And it was too much. And I, bit, I built it up, you know? And now I can be there for one and a half hour. And other people who are coming new there, they, they will only be there for 10 minutes and they say, I can get mental issues, you know? Right, yeah. they, it's like the frequency level of your mind system is out of control. It's, it's, it's really crazy. I've never seen that before. Well, that sounds like an intense place, that does. Yeah, it's a really, really intense place, you know? It's, it's like I, I, I teach a lot of it. I can teach a lot of it, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's, what do you think it is then that's actually there attacking people? Um, that's what I call a demon, you know? It's yeah. Just, it's just a form that it's, it's like uh, a person with, you can see it as a person with many traumas and don't accept anyone near him, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, to get him in his space, in his frequency level, you can say, then it will attack you in different forms. Wow. Sound, sounds like a pretty interesting place to go, actually. That does. Got another yeah. question for you. Uh, Kaz Rooney's just asked, what's your favorite location to investigate? My favorite location? Um, my favorite location where I'm most intrigued about is, uh, is Fort Remagans. I'm, uh, I'm there for now already three years and I'm always going back. There are locations I don't want to go back to, but that's my favorite location. Similar for my team buddy, uh, Natasha. She says, Gert, Gert wants to live in that fortress. <laughs> And she says, the last time she says, for the first time, I would love to be, to live there too, because there's always happening something. It's a, it's a real cool place. You need to come out, Sean. You need to come out. Definitely. Right. Definitely. It's, if you could investigate anywhere in the world, where would you, where would you pick? What would I pick then? Um, uh, I'm still dreaming about going back to uh, Portland. Um, I, we did there a tavern. We did there um, it's in Portland. Uh, there be there be monsters. It's it, it's an awesome location. We had uh, through an actress that I meet there on a uh, paranormal television show. Um, I asked her, can 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 we hang out? And she said, Gert, I want to take you there. And we had the chance to research. It. I want to go back. Why? Because my medium skills were that good. I just said to her, uh, I see a man shot here on that place. Why? And she said the next time, uh, next day, 
was the next day she sent me an email girl look here what i found in an old newspaper in the library uh, it was the name what i told uh, the place where he was shot and everything was right i wow. want to go back there because the activity is very high there in that place hmm. sounds intriguing that one does uh, another one we've got is there any location gert would refuse to investigate no, there is no location I, I would refuse. Good, good man. Um, you touched on your mediumship there, on talking about the Portland one. Uh, do you class yourself as uh, more of a paranormal medium or a sort of platform medium, psychic medium? What, what sort of realm of mediumship do you work in? <laughs> I see myself more as the psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's more like um, I see what people are doing, you know? Then, and I already say, this is not paranormal, you know? You can understand how people will react. Entities too, you know? It's just yeah. a structure. So normally I knew my, I call myself a psychologist more than a medium, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Viv's got a question for you. She says, does Gert think that demons have different nationalities? Funny question, I know. People speak of the jinn and other entities, for example. Can they originate in different countries, and how does this affect his opinion? Um, if I look, I will take entities and demons both. Um, if I look at normal persons, you know, um, I did... I visit different countries, and if I see Americans, there are a lot of them are very, they do, they are open, but they are really scared from things, you know? Yeah, if I yeah. see uh, the Dutch people, they are very realistic, realistic, you know? So we all got different uh, cultures in us, you know? Yeah. Um, so... I'm always thinking if I make contact with in other countries, I, I will always look how the religion is in. Like if I'm going to you with you to the galleries of justice, I will f first will observe how people react, you know, and then yeah. I will use the religion and think: is this is this really the English style, or is this more? Uh, an outside, outside the box, you know, and then I will choose an approach how to uh, interact with them. Yeah. You know? It's like uh, similar what I'm saying again. It's like, um, um, again, you will be the psychologist again. Yeah. Yeah. That definitely is. All right. Do you think that the sort of what the classes demons are the same worldwide they're just interpreted different by different faiths and religions and beliefs but it's essentially the same sort of entity uh, i think demons are everywhere similar they their approach their tactics how they work um yes it's all similar you know it's not uh like in that country, they will approach in a different style. No, it's all it's all similar. And um, I, I get many times the question: Can you defeat a demon by name? No, it can't. It's just you need to get rid of that frequency level, you know. So if if you you you've got to, you want to be on your frequency level. If you change your frequency level, he's off, you know? Yeah, but yeah, he will yeah. be back in, in a few moments, but that's how they work. Hmm, interesting. Um, so when you come over to this country, I was coming over at the end of March to investigate the Galleries of Justice. Is that your first time that you've been to the Galleries? Yes, it's my first time to the Galleries of Justice. Are you looking forward to that one? Yes. It's a fantastic place, absolutely brilliant place. Um, so the psycho go back onto the psychology side. Yeah. Does when you're talking to people on an investigation, having sort of that 
knowledge of the psychology does that help you sort of look at the direction that that person's coming from during their investigation yes um i see different people um with different skills or um different mind setting very scary sometimes um if i see uh the dutch paranormal researchers they are not so uh, from a very high level, you know, they yeah. are more like the beginners. If I see the paranormal researchers in the Netherlands, it's more that that it all all are beginners, you know. Uh, the people out of my team are more experienced than I see in other teams, you know. They yeah. still believe in the normal skills like orbs, and uh, I say, oh no, I don't want to know them. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> so is, is the paranormal sort of pretty much in its early stages still in Holland? Then? The paranormal research is really in the early stages. There are a few people in the Netherlands like Richard Stacing. He, that's a guy I know uh, very close, you know, but he stopped with his team. He's very experienced, but there are not a lot more experienced paranormal researchers in the Netherlands. It's just beginning. Belgium, too. Yeah. So a long way to go for them yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, another question of Vivian. She says, has Gert ever come across a person who was seriously possessed, and how did it affect him personally? Um, I had did I have someone important for me that was says no I, I was I was in America I was was on a few moments taken over by something uh, but I had someone in the Netherlands that was possessed and the, the guy called me uh, someday it was years ago and he needed help because he told me story, he showed me photos, and I said, did you trick the photos? No, no, no. So I'm going to a cameraman, and he, I showed him, and he said, Gerd, this is not tricked, you know? And yeah. I was go, and the funny thing was, I was happy, I was laughing, because I wanted to do this, because that was a time I still worked uh, uh, really much as an exorcist, and uh, so I, the guy, in the last hours, he, he, he called me and I said, he said, Gert, I can't do it. I said, you have a problem. We are already on our way. So he, it was, he wanted to infect me, but I stay uh, very, how can I say that? Clean in my head, you know, and uh, I wanted to stay clean. So we came on location and I, I just asked him a few questions. I, I saw that he was possessed, and it, it was like his mindset was changing every minute, you know, positive, negative, mm -hmm. positive, negative, and you saw different faces, but it didn't affect me, you know? Yeah. I was just saying, oh, I need to stay good, and I did my exorcism, and after that you see, uh, you felt it, it changed, you know? Yeah. And I, said I'm, I felt myself better and but it's uh, the person still need to get back in his own self you know he, yeah. he, he needs to recognize himself again yeah I mean, what's what do you say to these people who say a possession is just a psychological state it's nothing to do with spirit um you can be infected by an entity or something else. Then it's not uh, a mind setting, not more. You know, if yeah. they take you over, it's not a mind setting more. But yeah. you need to go back to your mindset to to get rid of it, to get to your own self again. You know. Yeah, oh, definitely. It's, Viv's just put, she says, is the help still going on afterwards? Like, do they still need the psychological help after a possession and for how long? What, what was the question, Sean? So, um, 
do you still have to help these people afterwards and do they still need psychological help after a possession and if they do how long is that help for um, a... if i do an exorcism i will always help them uh, six weeks until two months you know they need yeah. to, to be, um, reset their body and their mind setting you know because yeah. They are still scared that it's coming back, you know, because mm. everything was going wrong in that moment. They think it's still there. Yeah. So I think a lot of it, then, like the psychological side, comes in afterwards, where they obviously get to, they're thinking it's still there, they're thinking it's going to come back to them, and it's yeah. down to you to change their mindset that no, you are free of that now. You can carry on. Yeah, you need to try. And you can do it with uh, people say healing, but I'm a more I'm more a talker, you know. So I, I do some coaching. Mm-hmm. Do you think that sort of possessions and demonic cases are on the rise at the moment? No, isn't that? If I if I look around, uh, I did a few in the UK. I did I did in the Netherlands, Belgium. It's, it's not so much, you know. It's, it never happens. People make up big stories, but if I see... For me, I did one last year, and beside that, I didn't do anything for five years. So demons are very rarely, you know. Yes, they, yeah. There are not much there. So um, you mentioned before we came on air that you... and in your introduction, that you're off to France on Friday. Can you tell everybody what that's about? What, what you're going to be doing in France while you're there? Um, in France, I'm researching uh, a big historical uh, location. I can't say the name, um, but we we have the chance to do it twice, and it's a really big building with a big influence of, on England, London. You know, right? They did there something to hit uh, London. Then people maybe know the location already, but uh, <laughs> no. But it, is, it was a very important location, and we we had the chance, one chance in the lifetime, to do two two nights investigations, and then they will close and never open it for paranormal teams anymore. Yeah, so wow. We take the chance, and I. I worked on it for for three years, I think, to get in. Wow. So, I, mean, I don't think some people actually realise how long it takes to get into some of these places, how much research you have to do, how much you're talking to the homeowners or venue owners before they'll let you actually go in and investigate. Yes, yes. There is a location uh, in Belgium. Uh, it's... By Antwerp is Braindunk. It's one of the concentration camps, you know? And yeah. I'm there, I'm talking already 11 years for it, you know? And they wow. say, if the chairman dies, you can go in. So <laughs> the guy is already 82 and still on, on his chair. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just waiting for him to go now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he needs to go. He can go in. You can come over and do research. With it. <laughs> Just jump back onto, sorry, rewind a little bit onto the possession thing. Um, Sarah Coulthard Keynes asked, "Do you think some possessions are misdiagnosed as mental illness?" Yeah, you know, if you do anything like demonology, I think, and possessions, you need to understand. You must look at the medicine. Um, you must observe the person. Um, you need to talk to family. You know, you need to get so much information if, that you can have. A possession, you can't not uh, resolve in one day, you know, because I need to go back home and, and rethink, hey, what, what's been told? You know, yeah. and I need to watch over medicine. What is the influence of it? And then I go back, you know, and say, 
hey, there's nothing. You have a mental illness. Uh, I think you had a stroke. It was last year. Uh, some people ask me, there is a demon. I say, there is no demon. You ha Did your mom, mom have a stroke? The youngest da daughter said, no. And I spoke to the oldest daughter. She said, yes, girl, she had a stroke. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're spot on. So a lot of people have more medical problems than they will have a physician. Right. I agree, I agree with that one. Uh, we've got another one off Viv again. It says, can animals become possessed? You don't hear of it very much. Why not? After all, they can see spirit. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can, basically, can animals become possessed? I think uh, animals can be uh, be influenced. You know? And yeah. sure, if you see a dog... They can, they can have a mental uh, illness too, you know. Uh -huh. But if I see animal, they can be influenced. Yeah. Right. And the next question is from Simon Iona. Does Gert believe that all possessions are evil? Uh, most of the times, the possessions are evil. Yeah. I not never saw positive once you can be be influenced in a research if you not know yeah you know um, it can be positive too so it's not necessarily all evil though it's if it's no, no. not evil it's more of a influence than a possession is that how can, how can i best say that sean um normally um if uh if uh, a, a woman entity is raped, and a me and female medium um, feels that, uh, and she loses control. We yeah. can call that already possession. Yeah, but that's an, on the low level, you know. Right. I must do something, uh, Sean. Else, Fifth could call me. I needed to do a short shout out for Vivian, Lucy, and Vicky. Else, they could kill me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. I know Lucy's listening, but I think she's having trouble getting into the chat room. So I know she's listening. Oh, poor Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think about the different stages of possession? The different stages of possession. It's like you always come back to psychology. You know. Yeah. Um. If you. Um. It's like. Um. Most, if we take the easy one, um, if you have a demon, normally he tries to, to show himself as an, a liable figure, for, uh, as a reliable figure that you trusted in the real life. And he tries to make contact with you, you know? Yeah. You will enjoy, you will enjoy yourself, and then it will build up then he will put pressure on you, on your weak uh, places, you know, your mind or your body, and then it will build up. He, his target is to uh, destroy you, you know, Ment yeah. mentally. Not, they can't kill you, but they can me mentally they can destroy you, yeah. Yeah, so it's like oppression sort of stage. Yeah, 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 depression. So I don't call it stages, but that you will be on a certain level now. Yeah, yeah. It's not easy to tell which level it then is, you know? Yeah. Um, Vivian's just asked again, are all demons male? Sean, she wants only wants males, so... <laughs> <laughs> Shall we hope there is a female? I don't know if they are male or female. I think it's just a frequency level that can change in everything, you know? Yeah. What you what you want, what you think, they they all will it will always respond that level of frequency will always respond on the level what you think, you know? What yeah. you like, or what is your weakness. Mm, that's, that makes sense. 
definitely. It's um, that incubus and the succubus. I suppose that's again that could be down to the psychological way, way that you portray what's happening. Yeah, I think that's similar. Incubus and succubus is like um, yeah, similar. The way your sex is like, hey, I like males or I like females. It's just the way they will react on your mindset, you know? Yeah. Um, there is a funny one. I got I got a case like a woman said I was raped by something. So I said, can you see it? I say, I can't see it. So I asked her to lie on bed. And she was like, oh, oh. And I was like, oh, my God, what is happening here? I needed to laugh. So I walked away. A other medium was uh, looking if she saw something. I said, I don't see anything, you know. And I said to the woman, do you use any any medicine that can influence your mind? No. Her husband came home. And um, I asked him. And he said, Gert, she using medicine because she had, um, I don't know the right word for it, split personality. Oh, it's schizophrenia. Yeah, schizophrenia, yeah. yeah. So sometimes you, go, you get a re, the re, most rare cases, you know. It's yeah. really... Uh, it's, um, check, let's change the subject completely for now. Um, how's the planning, everything going for Powerforce Holland this year? The planning is going well. I did, first, I was scared I couldn't make it, you know. I needed to find a location. Now the location is just 300 meters from my home. Uh, there's an old chapel from 1200 and a castle from 1300. So that's fun. You know, uh, the guest speakers are in. Um, I'm now getting uh, rid of old tables, you know. People that yeah. want to hire a table and hoping, hopefully a lot of people will visit, you know. So get along. I hope it all goes well. So do we. So do we. Yeah. It, um, so I was talked about earlier that um, Holland's sort of pretty much in its infancy as far as paranormal investigation and research go. Do you see yourself as almost, well, say a leader, but a a pioneer in Holland of bringing it more into the mainstream? Um, John, a friend of mine, he's a producer, uh, he says, you're the pioneer of Holland, you know? You take people out and say, go to England, go to America, change your field look. Yeah, I try to get more people involved and uh, doing events, you know, to get people... So, I tried to do my best to get the paranormal research uh, to a higher level in the Netherlands. Yeah. I mean, I know um, recently, and I'm not sure how many people know this, but recently you was offered at your own TV show in Australia. Um, what happened with that? So you turned that down. What was the reasons? Uh, well, it was not in Australia. In Australia, we will do up for a festival. We are going to make a big documentary that will be there. Um, the TV show was for um, for broadcasting in in the states in America. Yeah. So we want, we are now busy with the documentary, but there will be an All Stars Next Generation. We want to try to get it on the Dutch television now. Right. So we want to get. Um, we are ready watching for people who come we can put in the team so the name will change the idea is to change the name to just paranormal society world yeah team, you know is and um so we want to try to get that on, on the dutch television you know is the idea yeah i hope so and we want to go to England, to the States. We want to go to visit everywhere. So do you get much paranormal shows on TV in Holland? Do you get the, the, the usual American ones that we all get? Yeah, we, we just get what 
do we get? We get uh, Ghost Adventures, Paranormal Lockdown, Taps, GSI, uh, Ghost Labs sometimes, but it would stay repeating itself, you know? Yeah. It's the old ones. And it's time, time for some fresh blood. Yeah, it's, it's strange because the channels don't want they, they send out the message from Paranormal Research, American shows, but if we ask the Dutch show, they don't want it. It's, it's crazy. It is. I think it's the same, the same here in England. It's just the same things time and time again. And yeah. I think the paranormal needs an, an injection of fresh blood, something new to get everybody's interest peaked again. Yes, I think so. For, for the Netherlands, it would be cool to have a team from us and I can ask guests like you, like Fifth, like uh, Fresh Blood Young Girls, like Vicky and uh, Lucy, you know, yeah. or, or Carrie, you know, it, it's good, it's good. So what do, what have people got to look forward from you for this year's Paraforce in this country, over in the UK? What are you, can you give us any hints as to what you'll be talking about? And um, I will, I will not, I will talk a bit, but I want to show the real Gert what he's doing normally, you know? Mm -hmm. I will do something what I did with Vivian Powell on Paracon Holland two years ago in 2016. I showed her something what I can do, right. and she was blowing away. Vicky <sighs> Holly was uh, last February in Holland with me. Uh, she she was there with me on the location, and I showed my the real girt, and she yeah she liked it. She she saw something, and you you will like it. I want to do. I did it last year. I wanted to do it, but I didn't get a chance because of something, you know. And yeah. now I will show the people. Talking about hyper focus, how you need that and what you can do with it, you know, it, 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 it's going to be cool. I will do there, I will use it in my lecture, you know. Brilliant. I mean, um, obviously, we're looking forward to having you over again. What What did you think to last year's Power Force? What did you go or what, what did you take home from last year's Power Force and think that's going to really stay with me, that one? Uh, my last Power Force was like, damn. I'm happy that I was there. Uh, the people that I met, uh, uh, you and Fifth, uh, showed how an event can be, you know, and the people make new friends and uh, the space you get to do stuff, you know, it, it's, it's well organized. And we need to do that in the Netherlands too, you know. I joined, I enjoyed the whole event, you know. So easy to talk to Barry and Joe and other people, you know. Yeah. So easy, you know. Making fun in the hotel, you know. Gary Brett. <laughs> <laughs> but Gary, bless him. Um, what's your hopes for the future of the paranormal, Gert? Have you got anything that you'd like to see happen in the future? What I want to see happen is um, it will be awesome that I can show the people the reality behind the paranormal. It's just all that I can show them. It's just uh, maybe 95% is all psychology, you know, yeah. that I teach people how they can see it, how they can influence the paranormal, you know, use tactics. And I would love to do that, you know, and I want to travel around the world, you know, I would okay. love to do that. Brett, what, what's your personal thoughts on the state of the paranormal at the moment? Uh, the state of the paranormal is 50-50, you know. Um, there are <laughs> there are 50% are idiots, and the other 50%, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> we can split up, I think, 20% are the real ones and 30 percent uh understand it but don't use it very well you know if, if i i observe always and then i need to laugh the approach how they do it you know 
I'm not saying I'm the best, but I know that my skills are better than a lot of paranormal researchers, you know? Yeah. I hope they will see uh, a lot of stuff is just normal in the world, you know, what's happening. It's nothing about paranormal. So I hope that I go on television and that I can take different people from England and the U.S., to go along with me because that's what I like, you know, to get the best people in, not not the TV stars, but the people like you, Vivian, and you know. Yeah. Do you think that at the moment, I'm not sure how it is in Holland with event companies. Is over in the UK, it seems there's a new event company popping up every week. Is it the same sort of thing in Holland? You get all these teams that are newly forming, and then next thing they're forming their own event companies. No, no, they're in Holland. Uh, I, I'm just beginning with paranormal research and with location, no one else can go in, you know. We are yeah. the only one to get the permissions and then we do an event. So um, I think there was one Dutch team doing did one time an event in Belgium and not more. It's very, yeah, it's just oh. a what? So, um, Viv's asked, what are your categories this year for your Paraforce Awards in Holland, and how can people enter or nominate for them? Um, I tried to tell them all. Uh, the Paranormal Pinup, um, Female and Medium, Male and Female Paranormal Researcher, um, what more? Uh, <laughs> male and Female Personality, I know, um, yeah, there are a few. Uh, the best paranormal research couple, uh, all time greatest. Um, uh, what more? There are a few more. So <laughs> I, I, I told the most of them. If you tell our viewers, what's your website? If you tell our viewers your website, and then is that where they can go on and nominate people? Yeah, you can. Uh, you can send nominations um, to info at paranormalsocietyworld.com and my website is www.paranormalsocietyworld.com my personal website is www.gertjbrower.com you can see my argif with all kind of things I did the last year so, I mean, I don't, you, the same as ours your awards have gone down really well for the last couple of years is it something that you think I mean, we've had some say, hassle over our awards, saying that we're causing unnecessary competition between people and this, that, and the other. But I know you come from the same thing as us. It's not competition. It's just rewarding people for their hard work. Do you yeah. agree with... Yeah, it's, it's yes, nothing I, competition. I, yes, I do this from 2014, and the people, every year they ask, Gert, is it coming back? You know, from from 2014 on, I get a lot of good responses, you know? Yeah. Because people know each other better than, hey, Gert, you bring new people in. Did you know her already or him? Yes, I know them already for years, you know? I bring yeah. producers in. I bring people together. Now it's good. It's good. Definitely. I think that's what it's all about, is bringing people together and letting them enjoy themselves and, a little bit of a reward for hard work that people have put in. Yeah, I, I've got a similar idea. Right. Where do you see Paraforce Holland going in the next few years? How do you see it growing? A virtual paranormal society world or? Uh, Paraforce Holland, the actual event. How do you see that growing over the next few years? I hope it's, it will grow, you know. Um, I'm always a guy that looks for year by year, hey, uh, what's my program for 2019? Uh, you know, I hope it will grow, you know. Um, I already, already said to my team members, hey, if you want a, a second audition, you will need to work harder for it, you know. Yeah. Because um, <clears throat> next year I know I need to have a, bit, a few... I have got some uh, big things scheduled. So I say, if you want another audition, you guys need to help me because you 
you can't do it not on your own, you know, it's too big. Yeah. You have to put in so much work. It's really a lot of work. I said it. With say, I mean, me and Viv couldn't do it on our own without the support of my wife Sarah and Andy's husband, uh, Viv's husband Andy. They help us tremendously, and I think it is all about the team that you've got behind you while you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. Else you can't make it. No. Yeah, exactly. So it's a lot of work putting these conventions on. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, what's your personal aims over the next few years? I know you've mentioned the TV stuff. Is there anything else that you'd like to be able to achieve in the next few years? Um, what I want to achieve is um, I want to go next year to America. Um, <clears throat> there is a convention uh, trying to get me in. and I want to visit by myself a convention to meet Nick Grove and Grant Wilson. You know, next year. Yeah. Um, so, and meet up with some friends there I made. And so, and yes, and and hope to have, yeah, I will grow, grow up better here in the Netherlands, get more people behind me, you know. People are enjoying me. I see people enjoying me, you know, as, yeah. uh, as a head person in the Netherlands. It's no problem for me, you know. I hope a lot of people in the Netherlands will do better research than just stay at focusing at orbs and stuff like that. You know? Do you see that as something that personally you want to do is bring Holland up to the Netherlands, up to the sort of area where the UK and the States are, where they, they leave the, the orbs and things behind and concentrate more on serious research? Yeah, yeah, that's what I want to do, you know. Better knowledge, better understanding what's happening, you know. Yeah. Maybe uh, then I'm not talking about parent psychology, more about real psychology that they use that in their research, you know. Yeah. Is is there a lot of teams in Holland at the moment? Then, or is it just like like say, is there just a few people scattered here and there? Um, there are popping up a lot of teams, but I get. A lot of locations that said they are coming with a telephone and they do research with a telephone. And I need, then I'm smiling and they say, Can you come? Because you have got a lot of stuff. Yes, I got a lot of stuff. <laughs> you know? And teams here in the Netherlands, I don't think they are really seriously, you know? They are not on a high level. They are just walking behind, you know? Mm hmm. Do you, you think having the TV program programs aired in Netherlands, it would pique some people's interest? It get people interested in the paranormal? Yes, it it it, it brings people interested, you know. Um, but finding new pe pe good people uh, beside it, they have structure in their life. That's not, you know. Yeah. Um, the program hitting the lower level in the Netherlands. So the the better people that's watching the the middle and the higher level in the Netherlands, there are just a few, you know, not a lot of people that are doing that. So there's plenty of structure for you to build on in the Netherlands, I guess. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Get everybody a bit more knowledgeable over there, mate. I hope so. I hope so, Sean. I have really hope so. <laughs> I can't think of anybody better, mate, to do it. Else you need to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, so we haven't got long left now. It's following my show, we have a Penny who's talking about hauntings in workhouses. So if you want to carry on listening after my show to Penny's show, just refresh the page when we've finished. And have a listen to that. That sounds very interesting. Hauntings in Workhouses with Penny G. Morgan. So refresh after we've finished and you have a listen to that. I'm sure you'll enjoy that one. Um, so I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing you at the end of March, Gert, when you come over to do the Galleries of Justice. Um, is there any other things that you've got planned as well for this year? Any other travels and investigations coming up that you're involved in? Yes, I want to get to Denmark, and I've been asked for Denmark. 
I will be in the summer or somewhere in England back to do research. I don't know where, but I I'm going there. I need just need to arrange a ticket and then I will go to research there and uh, and I don't know where we're going with the All Stars Next Generation. I don't know where we go. Um, change the subject. What's it? Quick last question for you. What's your favorite piece of equipment that you can use on an investigation? What do you like using the most? Uh, the Melmeter. And that's funny, just the guy where I was talking last week with a friend of mine is friends with Gary Galga. And I said, I want to meet him. And he says, Gert, I can arrange that if you're here in, the, in America. I want to have my own design of the Melmeter. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. What what do you like about the Melmeter? It's so easy. I I just only need the temperature changes and the and the and the uh, frequency frequency level of the EMF. You know, that's yeah. easy. And there can be a ramp up on and a, a lot of other stuff. So I want to get. I hope there is a chance to get a personalized Melmeter from him. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, it would be cool. What's your thoughts on like phone apps and things like that? Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> you can't use your phone in a research. You need to get rid of it, but because else it will be influence your uh, your camera. You you hear it on your camera. It will affect your photo camera. It will affect your meters. So your voice recorder, you will hear it, you know, I'll see it. I say it's, I think that's one of my pet hates on investigation when people are playing with the phones. Yeah, just get rid of it or just hit it all with a hammer on it. Maybe that. <laughs> and I'll, get, I'll definitely get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than phones, what piece of equipment do you least like? that you don't like to see people using? Um, I think I think it's all the new stuff, what is coming. I don't like it anymore. I'm a railing guy from the old school, just voice recorder, uh, full hard HD camera or a hand camera, you know, uh, the mel meter. That's for me enough. Just exactly like me, mate. I prefer old school, plain and simple, camcorder, still camera. And all this new flashing and beeping technology does nothing for me. No, 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 get rid of it. After all, I mean, the, the trailblazers in the paranormal didn't use any of it, so and none of it's actually proven, really, is it? No, no, no. There, there is no proof that uh, any of it works, you know? Mm-hmm. I've got an office. I never use it. No, no, same here. Um, we've only got a couple of minutes left now. So, with your mail meter, then do you do you record like do you do your baseline levels and record all those, and then keep doing different times throughout the night, testing these same areas, or do you just use it as you go? Yes, I've got an um, I've got an paper where I use lines in, hey, I go back in the different time settings and look if there is any change in the frequency level, you know, yeah. or temperatures, you know, and I I'm always use the Zoom. That's a professional recorder. I, I will always wear it with me, you know, but yeah. that, that's all. But I always watch like, hey, is there any change in, in the room or like that, you know? Best way. But we're going to have to wrap it up, Gert. I've got yeah, about a minute left. It's been absolutely brilliant talking to you. Thank you very much for coming on tonight. Thank you. And I look forward to investigating the galleries with you on 31st of March. Yeah, I look forward to meet you again in March. Woo. Yeah, there's going to be quite a few people there. Yeah, cool. So it'd be a good night. And just to remind everybody, if you keep refreshing the page after I've finished, and um, eventually Penny's show, Haunted Histories, will come up, and she'll be talking about haunted workhouses. So 
hit the refresh page when we're finished. And I want to thank every single one of you for listening again tonight. And huge thanks to Gert for being my guest. And thank we'll show, speak to you all next Wednesday. Thank you very much, Gert. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Over to you, Carrie. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.